Welcome to Heidi Relationships. Today, we'll read some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and maybe leave a comment down below. That would help the channel a lot. Thank you very much in advance. The first one is titled, Wife of 10 Years Became Crazy and Paranoid. I married a lovely girl from an Asian country over 10 years ago. She was kind, had a rough upbringing and I met her as she was a student in my hometown. Life was good. A few years back, she broke contact with her family in Asia, and her stories of her childhood and how they would treat her poorly, made me understand why. She was hard working, we would do our best to save up together and get a decent place to live. I took extra education on the side, and she took extra shifts. Eventually, we bought our first apartment. We spent the first year paying off most of the debt we had, so we would be able to live somewhat comfortably. She was happy, I was happy. We had it all going for us. But things started to get weird. It was apparent that she had some kind of panic anxiety. At first, it was the dentist, anesthesia, then certain types of food, the smell of deodorant, yay. Alcohol the list grew of single things she could not have around her. Eventually, she started becoming scared of certain people, especially other Asians. I had realized by then that this wasn't a single anxiety problem. She was getting paranoid. Usually, I'd know something new was about to hit the list, if I found her researching something on the net. A little over a year ago, she shut the curtains in our living room, and would not allow any noise inside when the doors were opened to let in air. They have been shut ever since. During this descent, I have pleaded her to talk to a professional about it. She won't. Any doctor or professional is on the, don't talk to list. The first months, I was in contact with a support group. I'd try anything to help her to cope with this. It didn't help. My attempts to help her makes her think I look at her as, crazy. I ended up just trying to make her feel as safe as possible. Eventually, we managed to take walks outside together. Keeping her, safe, seemed to make it better. I thought I was on the right track, and my doctor believed I should stick to it. I got her into arts and crafts, which she loved even made presents for others. It seemed good. Today, though, I don't know what to do. I came home from one of the hardest weeks in my working life. Now, she's scrubbing the walls, ceiling, every item in the house, changing gloves for each item, about to throw away so many things that she is convinced has been poisoned by some plants. She's been up since I went to bed yesterday, and I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what to do she seems like a different person. I've barely slept myself this week, and the bedroom is turned upside down. Damn it I can't think straight, and I'm afraid she'll not recover. A user in the comments said, therapy or divorce, those are her choices. You cannot restructure your entire life to support her bizarre paranoid fantasies. Not sure where you two live, but in the US you can have a spouse put on a mental health hold for observation in situations like this. It sounds like she's slipping fast and needs some serious professional help and possibly medication. Don't just keep trying to address the symptoms, find out what the actual problem is. Another user said, Op, I wanted to add, do not feel guilty by forcing medical intervention. She could very likely have a brain tumor or another serious medical issue causing this breakdown, and you just capitulation to her paranoia as rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. The next one is titled, Update 1, Paranoid Wife. A few days ago, my wife was put into forced psychiatric care with psychosis. I appreciate the support from Reddit, family and friends, and I know very well that I had to get her there. It went well initially, primarily because she quickly forgot why she was there, but last night, reality hit her. I came to her and was hopeful, because they told me she had been resting and had been quiet the entire morning. She had spent the morning planning how I would get her out of there. She was stiff, not her normal soft self. She was frenetic, telling me what I should tell the police about her abduction. My visit was supposed to last for 15 minutes, but after 5 minutes, the staff understood I had to get out of there. I broke down when they tore her away from me, because she would not let go. I feel so incredibly broken right now. 
I don't know if I'm writing this to let things out, or if I'm reaching out for a non-existing way to make this easier. I just know I can't visit her now I can't hold her and make her feel safe, as I did the past 10 years. I knew this would happen, but I wasn't prepared it would hit, me, this hard. I have buried family, friends and watched people die as I cared for them. This is so much worse. Every instinct in my body wants to protect her, and I'm fighting it with reason and rationality, but the picture of her horrified face as she realizes I'm about to leave, won't leave me. The next one is titled, Update 2, Paranoid Wife. Wife is now in a long-term home. It's common for most patients living there to spend a majority of their lives there, on and off, depending on a lot of things, but I'm hoping she can recover and gradually start coming home sometime in the spring. Currently, she's silent about her problems to the doctors, and just calls them, minor worries. She's finally been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, and her current doctor claims she'll be permanently on medications to avoid symptoms returning. Right now, there's not been many improvements, other than the medication has been working well in avoiding more psychotic epoxides. It's been a hell of a ride since I posted first. That was early November, right before I called the psychiatric hotline. She resisted treatment at first. She still disagrees but accepts it. Now she's been well behaved, and her first vacation is up. She'll be home for three nights this Christmas, and unless she's just been playing along and plans to stab me in my sleep, I'm sure we'll have a nice time. The next one is titled, My mom stole $6,000 from me and claimed it belongs to her and I owe her everything. She's 50F and I'm 17F. She lost her job in March of this year and was behind on rent, bills. So, without asking me or telling me, she just emptied my bank account, I'm a minor in the US. When I confronted her, she told me I owed it to her for her struggles raising me as a single parent. The thing is I'm headed to college in a month. And that money was my living expense for the entire year. It was money I had earned through competitions and awards. Not to mention she isn't contributing a penny towards my education, and after paying for tuition I now no longer have any way to support myself without a loan. Not to mention I already contributed around $2,500 in rent over the past few months since she was laid off and she has around $45,000 in her own savings account. She had no reason to withdraw from mine. Of course, she isn't paying me back, never does even though she claims she will. No one seems to be taking me seriously, I called family, the police station, etc. And everyone is just dismissing me for being overdramatic. I feel so hurt and betrayed by her actions. She has a history of being very verbally, physically abusive. But this is just unfathomable. I can't rationalize how my own mother could steal from me. How do I deal with these emotions? I'm so lost and I can't think. A user in the comments said, I would recommend talking to your local bank manager as well. I opened my first checking account when I was 16, without a co-signer, adult because my mom was similar, through US Bank. I had money put into a saving account growing up and never actually saw it. When I got my first job I refused to use that same saving account. I didn't trust my mom with having access to it. I think they can approve it at their own discretion. Another user said, you're going to college right? You may have to open your own student checking accounts. Go to your college to talk about this. Unfortunately, you also need to have your mail sent to you instead of the address you share with your mother. As a parent, I'm mortified that your mother did this to you. I'm so sorry. The next one is titled, Update. My mom stole $6,000 from me claiming I owe it to her. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who took the time to read my post and give me advice. There were too many comments to respond to, but I did read every one and my heart goes out to those who shared similar stories. A lot has happened in the past few days. The day after I posted, my mom broke the lock on my bedroom door and accused me of planning her murder in conjunction with my professor. Which is not only false, but so laughably outlandish that I finally called my university as many here suggested. Their police department got me out the same day and put me in a temporary shelter for two days before moving me temporarily to university dorms. 
My mom did put up a fight while I was leaving and accused me of being a sex worker. She claimed evidence of my illegal activities could be found on my computer, iPad, and phone, all currently in police custody. I did give the police permission to look through my devices and even gave them my passwords to everything, but the relentless daily interrogations have really worn me down. Thankfully my university gave me a loaner laptop so I'm able to resume classes. I also found out that I won a scholarship I had applied for a while back and will be receiving a check worth $10,000 in the next week. Until I find permanent housing, I plan to put a hold on my mail so my mom can't get her hands on that money. Thank you so much to everyone who so graciously offered to donate but it looks like I will now be able to afford all of my tuition with a little left over. Of course, I still miss my mom and it takes everything in me not to respond to the emails she sends me asking if I'm safe and telling me she loves me. I'm trying to stay strong through it all, but I know deep down I did the right thing. There's still a lot that I have to figure out, like opening my bank account with no access to any official documents or a phone but I'm hoping to iron out those kinks within the next month or so and I'll post an update again when my situation is more stable. The next one is titled, I Ada for siding with my wife, even though she might be in the wrong? Context. This happened a couple of years ago, pre-Panini, but my parents brought it up recently, so I thought I'd bring it to the wise sages of Ada to determine if I'm the ah. All of us are Asians, if that matters, and we live in C. Issue. My cousin Mia, then 40F, and her son John, then 8 meters, were kicked out by her husband during the holidays and had nowhere to go. I, then 30 meters, convinced my wife Anna, then 27F, to agree to them living with us temporarily at our new place until they found alt living arrangements. A couple of weeks goes by, and I get a frantic call in my office by my mill who tells me that Anna slipped on a puddle of water while carrying a hot water bath from the oven, she bakes a lot, and spilled the entire thing on herself. She passed out from the pain, and Phil rushed her to the ER. It was terrible, and she was stuck in the hospital for days. During that time, Mill confided in me that Anna had installed a security camera in the kitchen because she was convinced John was spilling the water and I should go check it. I immediately do that and see that John had waited until Anna had left the kitchen before taking his glass and pouring a puddle in front of the oven before leaving. I was furious and confront Mia. She tells me that John is probably acting out cause Anna was mean to him, but I told her that my wife was in the hospital because of that little shit. I eventually kick them out. Word gets around, parents get involved, etc. Mia calls me a liar, even when I show them the video. Some family members say John was playing a prank and he's a child. I went LC to NC with family that sided with them, and family reunions have been obviously ruined since. Recently, during a dinner with my parents, they asked if I was ready to forgive them. I told them no, because Anna was severely injured and we had to fork out a lot of money during her recovery, Mia obviously did not pay a single cent. My parents said Anna can heal once she forgives but I said they can consider Mia as their daughter since they obviously don't care about their son. My mother started bringing up the times I played pranks as a child that went wrong. I told them I apologized and grew up from it, but Mia didn't even apologize and blamed my wife instead. Now my parents think I am ruining the family relationships. Updates. Thank you everyone who has given their input. I woke up to a ton of messages and awards. As much as I appreciate them please stop giving them, this account was meant to be temporary. I won't be able to get back to each of them, but here's some extra info that was not mentioned on the post, due to word limit, or some recurring questions. How is Anna now? Yes, the burns left scars, both physical and mental ones. We have gone for both couples and individuals therapy for what happened. It was a difficult recovery process, but she is an amazing woman who has beaten the odds. Why did Anna install a camera in the first place? We started finding puddles of water in the kitchen after they moved in, and my wife suspected that John was spilling water because we searched for the source but couldn't find it, we checked the plumbing, the ceilings, etc., and the puddles mysteriously disappeared when he wasn't around. My wife was suspicious as there were a couple of times my IL slipped due to those puddles, 
they visited while Mia and John were around, but neither were injured. To the user who called my wife creepy for spying, you're wrong and rude. How was Anna mean to Mia and John? Anna was just enforcing house rules that John and Mia deemed unnecessary, e.g., no eating in rooms, plates in the sink, cleaning up any messes. I suspect John was terrified of me, I admittedly look intimidating, and because I worked in an office, Anna that time was a grad student, Anna was the one who had to enforce it most of the time. Why is my family siding with Mia and John? Mia is the youngest child of her family who always had the short end of the stick. At that time, she was dumped by her husband with no money and a child. But honestly I'm not sure why my parents were strict with their own kids, including me, but close one eye to the monstrosity that is John. Pity? The youngest in the entire family, including extended. It's a mystery because my parents beat the crap out of me for playing that one final prank that destroyed my dad's work documents, and no, I've never sent anyone to the hospital due to my pranks. Why were the courts, or CPS, not involved? The legal system in my country is tricky to navigate, and the police, like one user pointed out, don't like to involve themselves with minors or household matters, video or not. We could have pursued it as a private, civil matter, but that would have cost a lot of money, which we were spending on Anna's recovery. And my country's CPS is only for severe abuse cases, the social workers are swamped, and a lot of neglect goes unreported unless the child dies. Yes, it sucks, where the child is near death. Very unfortunate but that is my country. So no, we didn't involve them because it was a financial hassle and Anna just wanted to be rid of them, she didn't want to relive the entire thing again. A user in the comments said, NTA. I get kids play pranks. But a prank that results in a serious injury with no accountability from the parent or child is not okay. It also means chances are high the behavior will continue or escalate. You and your wife have a right to feel safe and comfortable in your own home. I wouldn't feel either after that type of reaction from both the parent and kid. Another user said, NTA. I think family is always a messy situation. I get that Mia's son was only eight at the time, but he did it on purpose. The fact that she didn't take accountability for her son's actions after you gave them a place to stay is disheartening. Your wife might have been mean to the eight-year-old or whatever, but it doesn't negate that your wife had suffered serious injuries. If your wife broke an arm, I would say maybe an overreaction because that's an accident that would recover without severe trauma. Burns are by far some of the worst pain somebody can encounter. It's a line you have to draw. If your wife is a priority and she obviously did nothing wrong back her up. Family always defends the one who is having a hard time with life and that was your cousin. Maybe I'm not understanding but if you have footage, then you did you part to make your family understand. If they don't it's because they are turning a blind eye. It sucks to not have family on your side, but it seems to me that you're making the right choice. Only people that matter is your immediate family, wife and kids, when you're married and everybody else should fall second. For example, my mom dad and brother before my girlfriend, but if my GF becomes my wife, then my wife takes priority. I think it's simple way to view it. The next one is titled, I Ada for letting my brother and his wife watch our four-month-old daughter without asking my wife? My wife and I have a four-month-old baby girl. So far, only one person has been allowed to watch the baby. Wife's best friend. Her best friend is a good caregiver and she's a mom herself but she's not like super nanny or anything. Just a normal person. My brother and his wife have been begging to watch the baby for us, but my wife always says no. My brother's wife is certified newborn care specialist and lactation consultant. Not saying she's any better or worse than wife's best friend but I think it's safe to say she'd do a great job of taking care of our baby girl. Yesterday my wife was at work, and I needed to take my car up to the shop for an oil change and inspection. It had to be done today as my guy won't be in the shop again until after the 4th so my inspection would expire by then. I didn't think it'd be fun for my little one to sit in a stinky gas station auto shop for a few hours, so I dropped her off with my brother and his wife. Well now I'm in the doghouse. 1. 
for not asking her first and two, for letting someone else watch the baby who isn't wife's best friend. I didn't ask because I didn't think it was necessary. I knew 100% that our baby would be well cared for. I was within 10 minute drive and both my brother and his wife have cars with the car seat. They had all the supplies they needed. My wife's job is also within 10 minutes of their house. My wife is upset because she doesn't want a bunch of people watching our baby which I get but it was just my brother and his wife. I don't plan on sending her to grandma next weekend, Aunt Edna the next, and cousin Jimmy the week after that. Just one day with her aunt and uncle, four hours total. She thinks we need a consistent person to watch her, her best friend. A user in the comments said, NTA. I'm guessing this is your first child, and your wife sounds like she's a little overanxious about the baby which is totally normal, but just because her feelings are normal that doesn't mean she's in the right. Unfortunately, though, as you both navigate parenthood you are going to have to find a balance because if you continue down a path of whatever she says goes you will likely end up resenting her and it can do damage you your marriage and how you are a parent. Baby steps. Apologize for not telling her ahead of time but tell her that it's not okay for her to make these decisions unilaterally. Fight about it then find the compromise. Another user said, NTA. You left your child with trusted family. She's four months old, not four weeks. I suspect she's probably on a routine and was just fine spending time with uncle and aunt. My brother's wife is certified newborn care specialist and lactation consultant. That sounds more qualified than your wife's friend as someone to watch the child for a brief period. You need to talk to your wife and figure out why she's so weird about this. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the relationship stories. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and write a comment. I really appreciate your support and it helps my channel so much. Thank you.